Okay. So, now, this right over here, this little presentation, I call it the five wellnesses, all right? And the five wellnesses is something that I created for support groups and for colleges and universities I speak at the graduations. And I've been getting such a positive feedback that I was like, you know what? This is my group. I want to share it with you guys, too. So, um, I believe that every single person has five wellnesses, all right? It's... Your physical wellness, and that's not just like, you know, sickness and health and everything else. It's also like your, your weight and everything that goes into your physical overall well-being. I believe every person has a mental emotional wellness. And this is like a mental wellness in the sense that some people continue to read and continue to educate and learn. That's a positive wellness. Some people don't do that stuff. Um, sometimes people have drug addictions or whatever, or different things that can cause the, the mental wellness to not be there. Or emotional wellness in the sense that people um, feel that disconnect and they're depressed, they're not happy or whatever. So that's, that kind of goes hand in hand. Obviously financial wellness, you know, that, that kind of self-explanatory living paycheck to paycheck or, you know, saving or whatever. But there's a balance with that too. The social wellness are kind of grouped together because I was going to do like family and social separate. But social wellness is kind of how we feel as an individual and we feel that other people view us in comparison to how other people really do view us and see us. And this could be like close family members like spouse, children or whatever. Or it could be like friends and other extended family members. And then the last one is spiritual wellness. And spiritual wellness could be, you know, religious, in a religious sense, like a Christian or Judaism or uh, Muslim or whatever. It could also just be spiritual wellness in the sense that people have, like, a feeling of a higher being or connection, kind of like a Zen yoga type thing. And um, every person has all these wellnesses together. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because I actually want to share my story with the entire group here today. This was me about 10 years ago, all right? And a lot of people don't believe me when I tell them I was 350 pounds, but I was 350 pounds here. Those glasses were holding on for dear life on my face there. And um, at this point in my life, when I grew up, I was actually, I came from a good home. I came from a good background. My parents put a lot of time and effort and energy into making sure that we had the things that we needed. We didn't have everything, but we had the things that we needed. And when I kind of launched into college and everything, everything was going well. And my story is kind of like a story from, you know, here's the balance in life, here's the wellnesses, and I kind of fell from grace. And I got into a bad marriage, um, and I'm not blaming my wife in any, in any way, shape, or form, which is that she was oil, I was water. It just doesn't mix. It was toxic for both of us. Um, I started to have poor eating habits. I was, my financial well-being was terrible. I was living paycheck to paycheck at a job that I was absolutely miserable at. Um, I turned to drugs. I actually used to smoke marijuana all the time. Every morning before work, the second I walked in the door, I smoked. It was just nonstop. I was dependent on it, so my mental wellness was gone. Obviously, my physical wellness was there because I wasn't there because I wasn't eating healthy. Um, I was in a miserable relationship, so my social wellness wasn't there. You know, I'd stop seeing my family. I stopped seeing my friends. I stopped doing all the things that, that made me who I was. And then the last one is the spiritual. Um, well, I actually went to school to be a minister. That's what I wanted to do with my life. And at this time in my life, I stopped going to church. So I kind of like, I was at rock bottom. And I remembered when I was in college, I actually heard a quote somewhere from, about Jerry Rice. And anybody knows Jerry Rice, he's the greatest wide receiver of all time in the NFL. He set records that will never be broken. And he played back in the NFL where you could tackle somebody right at the line. Not today's rules where if you touch somebody, you get a flag, you know? He set records that will never be broken. When somebody asked him, how did you do all that? How did you set those records? He said, I will do today what others won't so that tomorrow I can do what others can't. And he met with his training, with his conditioning, when the season ended, the things that he did, other athletes weren't willing to do. That's why when Sunday came and it was game time, he was able to do what other people couldn't do. You know? And so I applied that to my life at that time. I started working out. I started going back to church. I started, um, I started a new job with Brian and Care Choice. I um, started trying to spend more time with my family and my friends. I ended up divorcing my wife at the time. And I went through that, that little struggle right there. And um, I um, went back to church. And then I, was, I started reading and I stopped doing the marijuana. I stopped smoking up. And this is who I became, all right, at that time. And I took that quote, but then I didn't get the balance either because I kind of overshot that balance. And then I became arrogant, cocky, 
the womanizer, you know, I was a terrible person, you know. My friends and my family still were like, you know, Steve, uh, you, you, you're, 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 you gotta stop, you gotta stop. You know, you gotta take it down a notch. You gotta remember who you were as a child. Like, we're glad that you're this, this person, but you know, you gotta stop judging and stop doing this and that and become the person that, that we know you are. And it took a combination of my, my now wife, who was my girlfriend then, my cousin, my brother, my mother, they kind of had like a little intervention with me and they sat me down and they kind of said, listen, you know, get your act together. And they reminded me of another quote that I want to share with you that somebody who was influential in my life when I was in college, Mr. John Keane, he said that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And they remind me of that quote because it's, it's something I tried to live by and I wasn't living by. You know, and I wasn't doing things I was supposed to. So, through the help, through, you know, allowing, again, egotistic and everything else up here, allowing my friends and my family to, to help guide me and curb me back, I was able to get back to that balance. And this is who I am today. You know, I, I always wanted to be a father. I got my two kids. I love my kids. I'm not getting emotional. <laughs> I, love, I love my kids. They're my babies. I love my wife. You know, we met in 2007. She helped bring me back to earth. I'll never forget our first date. When we were on our first date, at the end of the night, I walked her back to her apartment. I said goodnight. And, I, and as the door closed, I said, I think she's the one. Like, I just, I just felt it, you know? And she was the one who kind of helped bring me back to that balance. And, you know, when I was a kid growing up, anybody would ask me, you know, what do you want to be when you get older? I always said I want to be a daddy. So, you know, now I got Steven and Sydney, and those are just, that's my legacy. You know, and then the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because, you know, now I have that balance. You know, you heard me say before, I'm starting a new business. You know, having gone through, you know, the fall from grace, then overshooting the balance, and then coming back down to balance, I find that anything in life after going through that, where I was to get to where I am today, I'm only 31 years old. I'm only 31, I'm a young man. But having gone through that, everything else just seems easy. Everything else just comes naturally. It's almost like a light switch. It's like, yes, this is tough, but I'll never forget what it took to lose 125 pounds. Yes, this is tough, but I'll never forget what it's like to give up the dependency of the drugs. You know, I'll never forget what it's like to, to, to get divorced and go through that and everything else. You know, so everything else seems to pale in comparison to that, and that's where all the successes and everything else come together and bringing that balance of the five wellnesses together. You know, and the reason why I want to share this with you too is because I want to talk about why. You know. I'm nobody special, all right? I am nobody special. If you watch like The Biggest Loser or Extreme Makeover shows, you, know, you find these people like, yeah, I'm like 400 pounds, I'm gonna lose all this weight. That's what they wanna do. But then you find out throughout the course of that transformation that they had emotional issues. One guy's son died, or um, he turned to food. Another person you know, had an abusive mother, or another person was in a, a, a bad relationship, or whatever. There's always something that causes. So it wasn't just the weight that they had to lose, but it was the whole five wellnesses had to come together. And at the end, when they stand there transformed on stage after losing hundreds of pounds, they've actually transformed as a person, as a better person. So it's like, you know, we're all people here. I'm nobody special. Anybody can do this. You know, it's just your, your why has to be strong enough. You know, why do you do the things that you do? And uh, I'll close it with, I wrote this blog years ago. It's called Remember the Name, which was the name of a song that I absolutely loved back in 2007. And I talked about how... When we were kids and we were growing up, we all had something that we wanted to be. I'm going to be the president. I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a doctor. And how many of us sitting in this room seriously are what we wanted to be as a child? 10%? Maybe 15% of us? And the reason why I say it is because something happened along the way. Whether it was an obstacle that was too great, or somebody told you you couldn't, or, or something happened that, that stopped you from achieving that goal. And if you get nothing else from this message, it's you can achieve it. You can do anything. Not only do we live in the United States of America where you have the freedoms to do it, your greatest tool that you're ever going to own is right between your ears. You know, this mind here, you can do anything with it. And as long as your why is strong enough, that's your motivation. My why is my wife, it's my children. I want more time with them. I want to do more things. That I want to be able to provide for them the life that I didn't have. Although I had a good life, I want to be able to provide them the best life possible. You know, and that's why I get up every single day. That's why I come to work every single day. So what I encourage you, find your why. Why you do what you do. Make it bigger than anything else. Tell yourself every single morning before you get up, or when you get up, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if it's the right thing for you, 
success will be all that you know. So it has been an amazing seven years with you guys. I love each and every one of you. Please stay in touch. And sky's the limit, guys. God bless. Thank you.